Good morning and welcome to First Baptist Church, McDonough, Georgia. It is great to have you worshiping with us. We know that the grace of God, His favor, rests on us. And we need that more than ever as we go through these uncertain times. We're going to sing, Your Grace is Enough. Sing it with us. Here we go. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God.
going to be reading from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. But uh, Paul is talking to the Colossian church about holy living. And listen to these verses. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, and gentleness, and patience. Then in verse 15, it says this. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Let's pray together. Father, as we come to you, you tell us to clothe ourselves with love and compassion. And Father, it's a choice. Like every morning we get up, we choose to get dressed. And Father, it's a choice for us as believers to clothe ourselves with, with your, your loving kindness and goodness. And Father, then you say, let the peace of God rule in our hearts. You get to choose, choose to rule what God has given us, His love and His mercy. So Father, today I pray that you choose to have peace in your hearts, which only comes through the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that today, that Charles preaches, that um, you would feel that peace, the love, and the compassion by the Holy Spirit today. Lord, I ask all these things because you're a great, compassionate, loving, and merciful God. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
This is Austin, live from the Lazy Boy. Some of y'all thought I was going to say living room. I'm in the Lazy Boy still. That was one of the things different. The light last week, we changed the lights. See, every time it's little change, little change, little change in our lives, those changes help us. Those changes keep us sharp and keep us paying attention. Now, today I want to go a little different because this week we're taking my son Tristan to college and then we have to look at like how to get there and you know how to drive. And now in, in your lives, you might not know what this is, but this is a map. Now, this is a map of Henry County. It gives us all the streets and all the roads. Now, you're accustomed to seeing mom and dad type into the navigation system, like drive to Kroger and it takes you turn right at light. But back when I was growing up, we had these maps and these were so difficult to read at times. And in fact, I remember some of the biggest arguments that happened was the person that was reading the map was not telling the driver fast enough when a turn was coming. Now we have these phones that tell us and the cars are telling us and there's satellites all up there. They're watching us and telling us where to turn. But maps led us in the direction where we could see the big overview of where we were going. Now that's sort of where we're going today. I believe this in August, there's 31 days. And we want to talk about the wisdom that we're facing as we go into school, as we go into uh, this new part of our lives this fall, where some of us will be uh, virtually learning, some of us will be face-to-face. -face. There's some that will be staying at home and doing a uh, homeschool while we're working through this COVID crisis. And as we're doing that, I believe wisdom is something we can really grow in our lives during this time. That's right. I didn't say that, that you will grow in wisdom. We grow it. It's something that has to, it, it doesn't just happen that we have to spend time with it and I find that wisdom in my life oh, so many times coming from Proverbs now there's a couple of ways I do seek wisdom not only I seek wisdom with people that are, are typically older and wiser than I am and they've lived through it and I seek wisdom through God's Word because God's Word is where I find so much truth now the book of Proverbs gives us bits of wisdom in every chapter so this is what I would love to do. There's 31 days in August. Every day, what would happen if we read a proverb and we took one point of that proverb and we grew through it? Like let's say from Proverbs 3. Automatically in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Now, that's important because think about the overview of a map. The overview of a map, and you might not be able to see all the little roads, but this says every road in, in McDonough and Henry County. It takes us wherever we want to go, and we see the big picture of Henry County. And by seeing the big picture, we know how to get from here to here. And we know that, oh, look, this road connects, or this road connects, or this road connects. See, we got to see the big picture. Proverbs gives us the big picture then always when we trust God, He will make our paths straight. So what would happen if you start today? Today, whatever the date is, so let's say the date is August 1st, you would start with Proverbs 1, and that would be what you would read today. And you would take a little bit from that Proverbs, and, and, and maybe mom and dad can help you, and y'all pick one verse that really means something to you guys. And that day, try to say it two or three times to yourself, and you'll find out you'll learn from those Proverbs. This is Austin, gaining a little wisdom while being in the Lazy Boy, live in the living room. Thanks for joining us. We were waiting without hope, without light Till from heaven you came running There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law and prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt
so glad so very honored that you have taken the time today to join us for worship at the First Baptist Church of McDonough I wanted to conclude a message that I started last week entitled carriers of hope if you recall we talked about hope and how important hope is in our lives especially at a time like this that we're not only supposed to experience the hope of God that he brings into our lives we are also to be sharers or givers or carriers of that hope into a lost and hurting world that is really at times it can be a very hopeless world especially right now I mean maybe your life is precipitated by or maybe uh, your thoughts are precipitated by whether you'll get sick or not or, or maybe worse Maybe it is the thought of losing a job and not knowing what you might do with your life next. Maybe it's the thought of losing a loved one or your livelihood. These are scary times at the moment. I was thinking about uh, Mexico City, Mexico. You know, despite the rainfall for about five months out of the year, many of Mexico City's more than 20 million residents do not have enough water to drink. Mexico City loses about 40% of the water that falls every year due to poor collection services and um, a very antiquated system of, of, of pipes and underwater runoff. And uh, the massive drainage system is built to stave off flooding 
rather than to collecting the water for reuse. Now here's the problem. Potable, real drinking water increases, is, or rather is increasingly coming from a vast aquifer of water that is under the metropolis. The big problem is that the aquifer is being depleted faster than it can keep up with demand. And as the water table drops every year, the city, listen to this, the city is literally sinking into the ground. As the city sinks, the problems rise. Think about this. Um, there was one building that has sunk 13 feet into the ground. And as we think about hope and as we think about, you know, that kind of thing happening in Mexico City, like water, hope is one of those powerful influencers and indispensable needs in a person's life. You can live without a lot of things, but you can't live without water and you can't live without hope. If hope is depleted, the individual begins to sink and the problems begin to rise. That's kind of what we're seeing in this world right now. It's kind of why I wanted to bring this two-part sermon series on hope. Remember, we were circling back around to the idea of hope. We've kind of touched on over the last several months together as we go through this global pandemic. So as we wrap up this discussion on hope, I want you to turn with me, if you would, this, this, uh, whenever you're watching this, to the third chapter of the New Testament book we call First Peter. It's Simon Peter's first letter to the persecuted church. And we're going to look in 1 Peter chapter 3. Simon Peter, by the way, in chapters 1 and 2, has been encouraging believers to stand strong amidst the difficulties they were facing as a people group. They were having dissension from within. They were having lots of distractions and disruptions in their lives due to the persecution that they were facing at that moment in time. They were being persecuted, murdered for their faith in Jesus. And by the way, inherent to Christianity is the need to abandon your false gods in honor of and in favor of the one true living God who has come to us as God the Son, Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I led Lao Sukdeo's wife, a dear friend of mine in Orlando, who is a Trinidadian, Tobago, and he was a, a devout follower of Jesus, was born and raised in the church in, in uh, Trinidad. And his wife, Molly, he wanted me to share my faith with and lead her to Jesus, and I was so excited because Molly is a Hindu. And when I shared the plan of salvation to Molly, I said, Molly, would you like to take Jesus as the Savior and Lord of your life? And she said, oh, yes, I would. No doubt, I would definitely want to receive Jesus. And I said, oh, that's fantastic. And so I had this privilege of leading Molly to faith in Jesus. And when I said, now listen, you do know as, as a former Hindu now, this means that you're going to abandon your former gods. And she said, oh, Pastor Charles, I can't do that. I just want Jesus to be one of them in my life. In the early church, it was essential, even as it is in the 21st century, to abandon the false gods to follow the one true living God through his son, Jesus. Molly has been going through a series of transformations. I've lost touch with her, actually. But the last time I had spoken with her, she was going through a series of transitions and really thinking through what it means to follow Jesus and Jesus alone. And the early church was going through the same things. They were abandoning their dead false Roman gods or pagan beliefs or Greek gods and they were being asked to follow Jesus Christ and Him alone, who is the way and the plan and the life that is salvation. And so they were being persecuted for their faith. 
And so Simon Peter is writing to them and he's, he's challenging them to, to stay strong and to stay true and to keep hope alive because no matter what they were facing in this life, they needed to stay true to the one who had promised to stay true to them. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 is really a beautiful verse. It's one of the most popular verses in the New Testament. It says, but in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Simon Peter said, look, you can't go back to your dead gods and still follow Jesus. You gotta be true to Christ. And then listen to what he says. Be prepared always to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have and do this with gentleness and respect. Verse 16 goes on to say, keeping a clear conscience so that anyone who tries to speak maliciously against you will be proven to be a slander. Do you see what I mean by hope being a foundational principle of life? Listen, many of a soul has given up and been or cast aside because all has been lost, abandoned or imprisoned. And this leads to a couple of life principles, this passage that we just read. And I want us to consider this as we follow Jesus. And as it pertains to this thing called Christian hope that we've been talking about. Remember last week we said that hope is both a noun and a verb. It is both something that we need to experience in our life, have operating in our lives. Remember we talked about possessing hope because it's so important as we go through life, as we go through the ups and downs of life, that we have the hope of Christ living in us to help us weather whatever it is that we are enduring at any moment in our lives. We need to experience hope, but also it's something that we need to share with the world. I mean, salvation is something we not only experience, but it's also something that we share with the world. Grace is something that we not only experience, that all of our sins have been forgiven and forgotten, but it's also something that we should be sharing with a lost and hurting world wants to know if there's this kind of grace and love and hope in a lost and hurting world. And hope is no different because it is an import and it is an export kind of commodity. We not only embrace it, but we also, and experience it, but we must also be giving it, sharing it with the world. Last week, if you recall, we talked about a living hope. As Christians, we live and die by the hope we have in our hearts. We live and flourish as we live and experience the hope of Christ. And we die by the hope because we know that the blessed hope awaits us. And that is the culmination of our salvation. That is the hope of eternal life. Because we agreed, we, we invited Jesus into our heart and soul. We're also to be givers of hope. I was going to say we're to be livers of hope and givers of hope, but that sounds too weird. Uh, but you know what I mean. Let me give you these two points as we wrap this message up just today. Is, is that we are to be prepared to share the hope that we have been given. I mean, that really is exactly what Simon Peter is getting at. Hey, listen, make sure you're prepared. When people see the hope living within you, when they see that you are hopeful in the midst of hopeless situations, people are gonna ask you, why is it that you're so hopeful about all this? I mean, this is horrible. This is a global pandemic. I mean, look at all of the wrong that we see in our world right now. Look how divided the United States of America is right now. Look at the, we got this upcoming election that's going to even create a greater divide. We have flu season approaching that's going to even create more of the medical chaos. Why are you hopeful? Well, we're hopeful because no matter what happens to us in this life, the greatest thing that's ever happened will happen to all who've put their faith and trust in Jesus. We'll have the hope of eternal life. Simon Peter said that's a 
a powerful force for good in the world. And we need to make sure that we are being givers, that we are exporting hope in this crazy world in which we live. Billy Graham has well said, the evangelistic harvest is always urgent and the destiny of men and of nations is always being decided. Every generation is strategic. We are not responsible for the past generation and we cannot bear the full responsibility for the next one, but we do have our generation. And God will hold us responsible as to how well we fulfill our responsibilities to this age and take advantage of the opportunities that God gives us. Sharing one's hope and faith is one of the most highly valued aspects of our faith. And yet, dear friends, it's one of the least practiced aspects. Now, you and I know that we cannot give away what we ourselves do not possess. But as followers of Jesus, we do possess hope. Because Jesus has promised us to walk with us through everything we face in this life and to carry us home to the next. Now, Christians can walk around in the doldrums of life as if they eat sour prunes every morning for breakfast is beyond me. Remember the old vacation Bible school song we used to sing, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Well, good heavens, some of us need to understand the concept, if you're happy and you know it, tell your face. Smack, smack. I mean, we, we really need to let the world know. Simon Peter was saying, if you really have hope in your heart, if you've really experienced grace and God's love and, and all of those wonderful aspects of the Christian life, then you're going to want to share it. And it will be obvious to everyone by the light of God beaming through your face, through the way you act and react to a world around you. We are to be prepared to share the hope we've been given. Secondly, and finally, we are to be prepared to share the hope we've been given with grace and love. I don't think we need to miss that last part of that verse 15, with gentleness and respect. We're not going to win the world by fighting them over political ideas. We're not going to win the world by condemning them for their sin. They know they're sinners. It's not our job to point out people's sin. It's our job to point people to Jesus. And that's what Simon Peter is saying. Say, don't do it without love and grace. Don't do it without gentleness and respect for your fellow man. Gently, lovingly, graciously, kindly, compassionately lead them to faith in Jesus. One of the great evangelists of yesteryear used to say, share Christ with everyone you meet and sometimes even use words. Because you don't always have to. Some people are just going to see it in you. And they're going to ask you. And we need to be prepared to share. And when we do, we need to do so with love and grace. With what the scripture says right here, with gentleness and respect. I mean, listen, you can parse these words a hundred ways to next Sunday, but it's always going to come back to grace and love. In fact, the Bible says that the greatest of these is love. Maybe John, Paul, John, and Ringo were correct. All you need is love. But I can do you one even better for the scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would follow him would believe on him would never die but have everlasting life. We love, the scripture says, 1 John says, because he first loved us. If we do not have love, Paul told the Corinthian church, we become a resounding gong and a clanging cymbal. 
We make a lot of noise, but no one's going to care. In fact, they're probably going to put their fingers into their ears over it if we don't love. Jesus said, they will know that you are my, you are mine, my disciples by your love for one another. And if you don't have a love for one another, they very well may never know you're my disciples. A lot of the world, when they see the church fighting, they say, this is what the church is. I don't want to have anything to do with that. Remember, Paul told another group of believers, over all of these virtues, clothe yourself in love. Jesus said, greater love has none than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Paul said, perfect love casts out fear. Paul told the Roman believers, nothing shall be able to separate us from God, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul told the Corinthians in that great love chapter, he said, love never fails. Much shall remain and much shall be put to an end. The greatest of these, though, shall never come to an end. The greatest of these is love. Uh, yeah, we could do this all day, right? The amazing grace of God, the indescribable love of God leads to hope and life everlasting. People need hope in this world. We're need, we need to be the ones. We may or may not ever be in the medical field. Maybe we are, maybe we are not in the education field. We've got a lot of great educators in our church, actually, but maybe you feel like, well, I'm kind of on the outside looking in. There's not much I can do. Yeah, pastor, you can preach, but Charlie can sing, but what do I do? Well, maybe you're the one who brings hope to your family and friends. Maybe you're the one that brings hope to those that you know and love best. The people right around you in your sphere of influence in your world. Maybe it's the, the food attendant at the local restaurant. Maybe it's the people you're sitting with as you're getting the oil changed in your car. You're in that little waiting room. Maybe it is the waiting room of a medical facility. Maybe it's just anywhere your foot treads. The people who cross your path. Share the love of God with them. You know, Larry Carter is the president of Great Lakes Christian College in Lansing, Michigan. It's a great, small evangelical college. It's committed to raising up the next generation of responsible Christians to make an impact on their communities and world. 65 years ago, when Larry was a Little League baseball player, their coach asked the team at the beginning of the season, who dreamed about playing in the big leagues one day? And Larry responded like all of the other little, little leaguers on his team. They all threw their hand in the air. Yeah, I, I want to be in the big leagues. It was so exciting. They said they had so much hope in their hearts to win the, the season. And the coach said, listen, that dream begins today. The way you start playing baseball here on this little league team might determine whether you ever make it into the big leagues. If you really want to make it into the big leagues, you better start working hard now. Larry Carter said, I never forgot that message. And so when he was asked a few years ago to coach a little league baseball team, he gathered all the boys together at the beginning of the season for the first practice. He was so excited to share with them what their coach had shared with him. And he says to them, have you ever dreamed about playing baseball in the big leagues? Not a single hand went up. He knew that he had his work cut out for him. Boy, did he ever. It was a miserable season. He said it turned out to be a therapy session after every practice. Helping little boys understand they had value. They had purpose. They had meaning. And they could live with hope that one day they were going to do great things turned out to not be about baseball at all. 
turned out to be giving hope away to a bunch of seemingly hopeless, hopeless little leaguers who didn't know that they meant anything to anyone, not even God. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12 says, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. My dear friends, let me just share with you. If you're living in that hopeless place at the moment, I can't promise you that your circumstances will dramatically make a change. And then again, maybe they will because God is a God who can do anything and everything if He wants to. There is nothing impossible for God. But I do know that you can't do life without hope in your heart and not just any hope. The Bible calls it the blessed hope. It, it's the hope that has lasting peace. It's the hope that only comes from discovering Jesus as a Savior and Lord of your life. And so that's what I want to encourage you to do today. Just to say, oh God, I'm a sinner. Save my soul. Forgive me of my sin and the mess I've made of my life. I give you my heart and my soul today. Jesus Please, I accept your gift of salvation. I believe you died on the cross to save me. Today I'm yours. I give you my life. I ask you to save my soul. Would you do that today? Give your heart to Christ? Just in the, the quietness of this moment, just say, oh Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me of my sin. Give me new life. I take you as the Savior, Director, Boss, Lord of my life, and I'm going to live from you from this day forward. And if that's the decision you're making today, would you let us know? You can contact us. Info at fbcmcdonough.com. Tell us about the decision you've made. You can contact me at Charles Thomas at fbcmcdonough.com. You can get on our website, fbcmcdonough.com, and you can send us an email or a message. We'll get it. And here's what we do. Here's what we, we intend to do. If you're giving your life to Jesus today for the very first time, we intend to send you some information that you could really use. One of them is simply a Bible. To start reading through the Bible. We'll even tell you where to start. The, the Gospel of John is a great place to start. As you learn about Jesus and the love and life that He lived, it's a great jumping point to get into the rest of the Bible. We're going to send you some other information, though, too, about your newfound faith in Jesus. But we don't want you to miss out on life's greatest blessing. Uh, we don't want you to miss out on having hope in your heart. Despite whatever are your circumstances. Now let us know. We thank you for joining us today, though. We hope you'll come back next week. And we, we, we're looking forward to another great week next week. But God bless you. Thank you for being here today. We hope you have a great day. Lord. Amen.